Good morning and welcome on this Mothering Sunday. If I haven't already had a chance to say hello to you, my name is Reverend Cathy and I have the privilege of being vicar in this place and at All Saints Footscray. I hope you have all got one of these orders of service. Everything you need is in there and on the insert and hopefully you've also got access to a green hymn book. So, we're going to start by saying, let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we all say together, and we're now going to remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, which is in the green hymn book, hymn number three, All Things Bright and Beautiful. As the choir have just reminded me, omitting verse 4. Wonderful, and please do sit down. So we have a service of many different aspects today. Mothering Sunday, well, there's more to Mothering Sunday than Clinton cards would have you believe, isn't there? It's quite an ambiguous day for some of us. Some of us will be missing much-loved parents or even children. And, of course, we also think about God, who is our mother, as well as our father. And some of you, I'm sure, will have noticed this wonderful quilt here, which has Mother's Union on it, and the Mother's Union banner, which we have out today, because Eucaria is later going to be joining the Mother's Union, appropriately, on Mothering Sunday. 
and she will tell us a little bit later about why she's doing that. And we're also very much looking forward to the first outing of our gospel choir today. And that's just part of what we've got planned. But the most important thing we're going to do today here together is worship God. And so we start by turning to God and remembering all the things we've got wrong and asking for his forgiveness. Maureen will lead us. Let us turn to God, acknowledging that we sometimes get things wrong. Your love gives us life. We fail to live as your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good. We seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. We ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. And this is a prayer called the Collect for Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a human home in Nazareth and on the cross drew all humanity to himself. O Lord, strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please make yourselves comfortable for our first Bible reading, which Mark, our verger, is going to read for us today. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. The king of Egypt commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to a Hebrew slaves you shall throw into the river Nile, but you shall let every girl live. A Hebrew man and woman got married, and the woman conceived and bore a son. When she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could not hide him any longer, she took a basket made of reeds and covered it with tar to make it watertight. She put the baby in it and placed it among tall grass at the edge of the river. The baby's sister hid nearby and watched to see what would happen to him. The king's daughter came down to bathe at the river while her servants walked along the bank. Suddenly she noticed a basket among the reeds and sent a slave woman to get it. The princess opened it and saw a baby boy. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then the baby's sister came out and asked her, Shall I go and call a Hebrew woman to act as a nurse for you? Please do, she answered. So the girl went and called the baby's own mother. The princess told her, Take this baby and nurse it for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the child and nursed him. Later, when the child was old enough, she took him to the king's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. She said to herself, I pulled him out of the water, and so I name him Moses. This is the word of the Lord. And thank you, Mark. And we hear that familiar story, don't we, of the baby Moses being placed in a basket by his mum to save his life. Well, as is traditional on Mothering Sunday, we too have some baskets 
you may have noticed under the altar here, we have some baskets of daffodils. Now, I'm hopeful that some of those young people in the children's corner there might come and help me at this point. Because in our baskets, we have little bunches kindly made for us by Jane and Laura. And we would like to bless them. And then during the next hymn, we'd like every person in this church to receive one. So Emma, can you hold the basket for me? Now, who'd like to hold the other basket? Emma seems to have got the biggest one. You help her, Hannah. Okay, if you take one in. One in oh, all right, you two. All right. Now, if you want to face this way so everyone can see. Now, what, I want, what I'm going to do is bless these daffodils, and then I would like you, you two can hold them, and you can come and get little bunches and make sure everybody gets them. Don't forget the choir, and don't forget the people on the platform behind you, okay? So, Lord, we pray that you will bless these daffodils so that those who give them and those who receive them will be full of the joy of your love, you as our mother and father, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so would you like to start taking one, one for each person? And in the meantime, the rest of us are going to stand because we're going to sing our second hymn, the gradual hymn, which is hymn number 323, 323, Colors of Day. Spirit is here, so light up the fire and 
Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, has everybody, I think there's some people just arrived. I'll tell you what, pop those on the table at the back because the hour did go forward last night, didn't it? I mean, I'm very impressed that you're all here. Has anybody not got a daffodil bunch? It's more than one, isn't it? They're beautiful. Fantastic. Sorry? Yes, no, she's got one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So that's wonderful. Didn't you have one each for you? You get one as well. Do you want one for you? Okay. And now please would you remain standing because we are going to hear our gospel reading for today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Maureen. May I speak? And may we all hear, in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do sit down. Well, Mothering Sunday, also known as Mother's Day in our secular world, in some parts of the world, you know, Mothering Sunday and Mother's Day are two different days. But here in the UK, we have brought them together. And so we get Mother's Day, which is a lovely time for us to spend with our families and perhaps share things like flowers and daffodils and all the restaurants hike the prices, don't they? Because they know you want to take your mum or your kids or whatever out for, out for a meal. But Mothering Sunday is very different. Mother's Day has its origins in America when a lady looked at all that her mother did and thought, you know what? This woman deserves a reward for this. We should have a day to celebrate what mothers do. Now, this was quite some time ago. So it was way before that was acknowledged even as much as it is now. Mothering Sunday is a different sort of day. It is a di day when, again, quite a, long, meant quite a lot of years ago, Houses that had people working in them, like cooks and butlers and people like that, would allow them to go home to their mother church for that Sunday. And of course, going home quite often entailed seeing your family, perhaps your mother. So it fits with Mother's Day in that way. But it is actually about your mother church, and that is one of the aspects of this day that we celebrate today. But of course, it's not an unalloyed celebration always. And both of our readings cut through to some of the difficulties of, well, motherhood, but also parenthood, also being a child. We all have mothers. In that first reading that Mark read for us, we hear about Moses' mum who has the little baby boy. But of course, Pharaoh has said, no, all little baby boys born to Hebrews have got to be killed. So can you imagine the fear she must have felt? And she decides to try and rescue him by putting him in a basket, like we had baskets under the altar, and floating him in the River Nile. And it's somebody else completely, a wealthy princess who comes along and actually saves his life. But of course, for his mother, 
although that's wonderful, and she gets to look after him for a bit, she then has to, when he's just a, a little boy, give him to a different mother. And that must be quite hard, too. And of course, in that second reading that Maureen read for us from the Gospel according to John, we see Jesus on the cross, dying, and his mum there in front of him. How must she have felt? For those of you here who are mums or dads or, well, anyone who's loved anyone, can you imagine having to watch them suffer and not being able to help? It's the worst thing, isn't it? And for Jesus, he would know how his mum was feeling and he'd be upset for her as well as all that he was going through. But he thinks of her even then. And he says to her and to his best friend, the beloved disciple, the, the writer of the Gospel of John, John the Evangelist indeed, for whom this church is named, Mother, this is now your son. And he says to his friend, this is now your mother. And so that last line, from that hour on, John took her into his own home. The beloved cycle looked up, this disciple looked after Jesus' mum because a woman 2,000 years ago in the Middle East without a male protector would have been destitute without a man to look after her. So he's saving her from that fate as well as giving them each other to love. But even those two little stories don't get to the whole ambiguity of it all, do they? Because it's often true that we don't always get on with our mums. We don't always get on with our children. And sometimes life can be quite hard. And for some of us here, we might be remembering mums who are not, no longer with us. For some of us here, even worse, we might be remembering children who are no longer with us. And so then this day becomes quite a sad day. But of course, there is always more to it than that because there always is with God. Because as I commented earlier, God is our father and our mother. We're used to thinking of God as father, but you may remember the Bible reading from a couple of weeks ago when Jesus says, how, how have I longed to bring you under my wings as a hen put, um, brings together her chicks. So a mother hen looking after chicks is one of the images we have of God. And of course, God is beyond male and female, as we're told in many places. And so all the ups and downs, the joys, the difficulties of this day, we can bring before God who hears us as the perfect parent. Now, for some people here, we may have some of our friends from Ukraine who've joined us today. We have been collecting goods for Ukraine, and we have been offering English classes. We have been, um, well, we've been working with the Ukrainian community. For them, this day might be about motherland. Because when we go home to our mother church, we might be going back to our motherland. And, of course, as I mentioned earlier, we have our mother's union. Now, the mother's union was formed again many years ago, again when women were not terribly well empowered. But it brought women together and empowered women in a way that hadn't happened before. And Eukarya is going to speak to us in a moment about why she particularly wishes to join the Mother's Union. And you have got in your order of service a little insert that will guide you through that induction process. But before we come to that, I'd just like us to remember before God all those different aspects of today. We all have mothers. Some of us may have been given the gift to be mothers. Some of us think of this day with joy. For some, it's more ambiguous. We remember people who are going home to their mother church or who are yearning for their motherland. But most of all, 
we hold before God, who is the perfect mother, all of these emotions, and we ask him to take them and surround us with his love. Amen. And so you carry her. I think Mark's got a microphone for you. You'd like to talk to us a little bit about why you're joining the Mother's Union. Introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eukarya Asebu, Reverend Eukarya, and I am the curate here at St. John's Sidcop and um, All Saints Footscray. Um, I would like to join the Mother's Union. I'm already a member in my heart for a long time, but I want to do it officially today, being Modern Sunday. Um, growing up in Nigeria, um, most women are members of the Mother's Union. And Mother's Union is an international organization um, which do or does amazing work throughout the world, especially for women, for children, and for the entire society. And uh, their mission is in here, which we can see. So it's part of the reason why I want to be officially inducted or admitted into the Mother's Union today. Thank you. So I invite Mary Margaret, who I believe was yesterday made president of Mother's Union in Rochester. And so this is your first induction. <laughs> Her first official act. Um, so if you look at the insert in your order of service, you'll be able to follow the words. And please could you join in the words uh, of the Mother's Union prayer at the end. So I'd like to invite the, any members of the Mother's Union who are here to stand. Say, just you, Yvonne, I think, unless anybody else is going to admit. Oh, look, they're standing up. Yes. Yes. Oh, look at this. St. John's used to have a very strong branch. You have a lot of work to do. <clears throat> so thank you for standing. The Mother's Union mission statement is, the mission of the Mother's Union is to show our Christian faith by the transformation of communities worldwide through the prom promotion of stable marriage, family life, and the protection of children. We aim to achieve this through carrying out our objectives, to encourage parents in their role to develop the faith of their children, to maintain a worldwide fellowship of Christians united in prayer, worship, and service, to promote conditions in society favorable to stable family life and the protection of children, to help those whose family life has met with adversity, to promote and support married life. Membership of the Worldwide Mothers' Union is open to all who have been baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity and who support the mission and objectives of the Mothers' Union. I ask both new and present members to join in affirming their commitment to the Mothers' Union do you reaffirm your baptism promises? I do with God's help. Will you uphold and support the... Uh, sorry, I'll start again. Will you uphold and support the mission and objectives of the Mother's Union? I will with God's help. Will you continue to nurture your personal relationship with God and be committed to his family, the church? I will by the grace of God. Eukarya, I admit you to the membership of the Mother's Union in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And we have a pin and a membership card for you. So. Thank you. We commit ourselves to the work of the Jesus Christ through our membership, saying together the Mother's Union prayer. Loving Lord, we thank you for your love so freely given to us all. We pray for families around the world. Bless the work of the Mother's Union as we seek to share your love through the encouragement, strengthening, 
and support of marriage and family life. Empowered by your spirit, may we be united in prayer and worship and in love and service. Reach out as your hands across the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And am I right in thinking that the Mother's Union is, you don't have to be a mom to join the Mother's Union. You don't even have to be a woman. Okay, so it is open to all. And I rather like that aspect of it. And of course, as an inclusive church, we admit all types of families as well. Yes, yes, all families come as they are. So this is not some sort of nuclear family effort. Um, but it has, I, I, when I went out to Tanzania, I saw how much it empowered women out there and the wonderful work that the Mother's Union does do in Africa. Thank you. If you would like to take your seat. And now, in to celebrate this, the Gospel Choir are going to sing for us. So if you'd like to come forward, and Hannah, I believe you're playing the piano for them. the gospel choir, we are going to sing two songs. One is This Little Light of Mine. Um, we are singing it. We, we ha have just started this gospel choir, and we thought that we start off with a song that everybody knows, and also um, saying that we all have little lights that we can let it shine for God. And uh, because Jesus gave it to us, so we go out and let it shine everywhere we go. And the second one is like a prayer, asking God to help us to let our little light shine because we are giving our life unto him to use us. Jesus gave it to me. I'm 
Well, wasn't that amazing? Would you believe they've only had four weeks of rehearsals? Um, and we're looking forward to hearing from you again on Easter Sunday. So mark that date in your diaries, folks. Our gospel choir will be singing for us again on Easter Sunday. You may have noticed they're all wearing blue and white. That's because they're the Mother's Union colors. And by happy coincidence, blue and yellow are also the colors for Ukraine, whom I'm sure we're all holding in our hearts too. So... With those words ringing in our ears, I give myself to you. Shall we stand and together declare our faith in the words of the short creed at the bottom of page two? We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please would you be seated for our intercessions, which are prayers for each other and for the world. And our church warden, Iris, is going to lead us in these this morning. got some helpers coming thank you as you notice I've got a prayer tin this morning so as we say here our prayer can you put our prayers a prayer in the tin one at a time okay I'll tell you then okay thank you dear Lord we thank you that we are able to gather here this morning on mothering Sunday we all have a mum, those here this morning, those we remember in our hearts. We may have mixed feelings about our past, but we give praise for all those in our lives who have been given us love and protection, who have shown us the way to return God's love to our church and our human families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Can you put that in the tin? We've got to put the prayers in the tin. That's it. Wonderful. There are places in the world where it is difficult to celebrate at the moment. We pray for all those in Ukraine, scared and uncertain, for the, for the people caught up in conflicts throughout the world, suffering war and unfair regimes, and for those who do not have freedom of choice. We ask you, dear Lord, for your love and peace in our hearts as we pray for a world full of honesty, fairness and gentleness. We pray for you, Caria, this, as she joins the Mother's Union and becomes part of that great organisation. We pray for the work they do across the globe, bringing hope and support to so many who live in difficult places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time of year, we marvel at the new life springing up all around us. We thank you, Lord, for your creation. We pray here this morning that the natural resources you provide that sustain life for the well-being of the planet are used wisely. Help us, Lord, to see where we can make differences in helping to preserve our world for future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those who are unwell and scared at the moment. We pray for the doctors and nurses on all those who help people to feel better and to take away fear. We bring before you all those that are on our prayer list this morning, and we mention by name Sheila Burston, Rosemary Farrant, Michael Smith, Lucy Kemish, Svetlana Sokolava, Olga Conway, Mark McCarthy, and we pray for the Ivanenko family 
and all of those in Ukraine. We give thanks for the life of Philip Farrant, who has recently passed away. And we remember with thanksgiving Hilda Vincent, Bob Wilson, and Horace Tree, whose anniversary of passing is at this time. They will live in our hearts, but we will see them no more. May they all rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you. Now we can look inside the box. Look inside the box. And what do we find? Lots of stars. And what I would like my helpers to do is all to take a box of stars. There's three. You might have to share one. And I'd like you to give everybody in the church a star. Can you do that? If you, go, if you can give the people at the back there, the people on the platform and the choir, and you go down that side, and you go down that side, and make sure everybody gets... Yes, go off your pot. Somebody will help you. Lots of sight shiny stars. Whatever our memories or emotions we have today, we give praise and glory as we remember Mary, the mother of Jesus, and we give thanks for the Mother Church as a guiding light in our faith. Please wear your stars as a reminder of our prayers here today. Let us start a new week as shining examples of God's love and peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I've got one. Have the choir got stars? Can somebody take the, some stars for the choir so they can remember their prayers too? So Rob, Rob will join you. Thank you, Iris, for those lovely prayers. And I, I'm sure that by the time we get to the peace, everyone in this church will have received a star. Okay, can you perhaps take some over for the choir? So there's lots going on this morning, isn't there? So I'm going to invite you to stand and there's some people over in the memorial chapel there and some people sitting over at the sides there. Wave your hands about so they can see you if you want a star and you haven't yet had one. Yeah, that's right, Emma's on the case, Rob. And in the meantime, would you please stand? Because we're going to share Christ's peace. Now traditionally at this point in the service we would quite often shake hands or embrace. We don't really think it's sensible to do that unless you're with your own family because it is still COVID times. But we can nonetheless exchange the peace by waving or bowing or smiling or whatever. Catch the eyes of as many people as you can. And after we've exchanged God's peace, we're going to sing our offertory hymn. So Mark will bring us in with that um, which is number 192, so you might want to have it ready. It's Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us. You are one of us, Mary's son. But first, the living Christ came and stood among his disciples who thought he was dead. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. He said to them, peace be with you. And so, May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
The Lord be with you. We lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, holy, holy. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. Holy, holy, holy. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. Holy, holy, holy. You send your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join with the angels to celebrate and sing. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ. Amen. 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 Pour your Spirit on us all, that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. Amen. 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 For honor and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we sit or kneel to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. A word before we share communion. All are welcome here at the Lord's table. If you need gluten-free bread, please say when you come, we have some available. If you're not used to receiving communion or you'd prefer a blessing, please say when you come. But please do come. It is the Lord Jesus inviting you. It's not just me. And of course... It's still not sensible to all drink from the same cup. So I have had the privilege of taking some wine on behalf of all of us. But if Jesus is present here in the bread and the wine, he is present in each and every part. And so by simply receiving bread, you are receiving the whole sacrament.
Let us pray. We pray together the prayer in the middle of page six. Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, no service would be complete without a few notices, would it? Um, and of course, at this time of year, we do have an awful lot coming up. So next week is called Passion Sunday, and that's kind of the last normal Sunday before Easter. The following week is Palm Sunday, and we have a mayoral civic carol service, uh, civic service, not carol service, Palm Sunday service that day. So... In a fortnight's time, we'll be handing out palm crosses, we'll be having a procession around the church, we'll be remembering Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem, but also what he was coming to face. So there will be a passion reading as part of that service. And of course, the mayor and our local MP and various other dignitaries will be here. So we're very much looking forward to that, and I, I hope that many of you will be able to come in a fortnight's time on the 10th of April. Um, the f then, of course, we go into Holy Week. So we have something happening every day in Holy Week. Um, I don't expect you to remember it all, but if you want to write it down, it be on the screen at the back there when we're having coffee. But there's Compline on Monday, Compline on Tuesday, All Saints. There's Stations of the Cross on Wednesday. On Thursday, Maundy Thursday, there will be a communion of the Last Supper here. And on Good Friday at 2 o'clock, between 2 and 3, we, cut, we gather together to remember Jesus' last hour. Then on Saturday, which is the 16th of April, we have um, something specially for the young people because um, on Good Friday, we're kind of in that in-between time as a church. Jesus has died and he hasn't yet risen for Easter Sunday, but on Easter Saturday, in conjunction with Sidcup Partners, we're making Easter bonnets here. All are welcome, it's totally free. There'll be a messy church as well, lots of crafts and refreshments. Come at il between 11 o'clock, um, at two o'clock will be the judging, so come back if you've been early and gone. And then at 2.15, the winners are announced, and at 2.30, there's a parade of Easter bonnets going through the center of Sidcup. And I think there are other things happening in Sidcup that day too. So that's Saturday. On Easter Sunday, the 17th of April, that's a really big day for us here. We get our new Paschal candle. We light it for the new light of resurrection and we bring it into a darkened church. 
and our gospel choir will be singing for us because we then share the joy of Jesus coming back to us, showing us that death is not, in fact, the end. I think that's enough in terms of what's coming up. Um, you have heard me mention already that we are collecting for Ukraine. We're collecting in two ways. Firstly, for goods to be sent out there, and there's a van leaving regularly. You can bring goods here on a Monday morning or a Wednesday morning. Monday morning, go to the hall. Wednesday morning, come to the church between 10 and 1. They want medical supplies, dried food, um, things to keep them warm. That's to go out to Ukraine. We are also collecting for arriving refugees, of whom a few have now started to arrive. So that's things like children's clothes, toys, um, clothes for men and for women. Um, we've even got a pram that someone's donated over there. So anything you can think that you would need if you were arriving in a country with nothing. So nappies, sanitary towels. Um, there's a list at the back on the notice board um, at the back of the children's corner there. But if you would like to contribute, that would be wonderful. If you'd like to give money, somebody's playing a lovely little tune. Um, there's a collection bowl on your left for Ukraine. The bowl on the right is for the church. And for anyone who is, like us, wanting to help, um, one simple way of showing solidarity is for... I don't know if you know that the national flower of Ukraine is a sunflower. So at the back, there are these little bags... They contain sunflower seeds and some instructions as to how to grow them. Um, all down this road where I live, every house has planted some in their front garden. So we're planning to have a lovely show of sunflowers all the way along. There will also be a Ukraine badge in there for you to wear if you would like to do so. So do collect one of these little bags on your way out and plant your sunflower seeds and share your photos of them um, on uh, Facebook as well. If you'd like to volunteer, help take in goods or um, do anything else, we're teaching, Liz did yesterday, our first English language class for those who speak Ukrainian. Um, so if you know how to teach, you'd be most welcome to help there as well. Um, have a word with myself or with Chris at the back there. Um, he's nodding. Do you want to put, lift your hand up so everyone knows who you are? Um, he'll be by the door, or Liz, or indeed pretty much anybody. Just keep the word going around. We'll find you if you want to help. Um, goodness me. We've just come to the end of our rota for sides people. That's people who welcomed you as you came in and handed you the order of service and helped guide up to communion. So we're, we're starting a new rota. So if anyone would like to volunteer to welcome... Now is your chance. Again, have a word with me or have a word with Iris, who did our prayers. Um, we've already got one new volunteer, so we're delighted to welcome you to the road to Keith. Um, electoral roll, little reminder from Maureen. Anyone like to be officially recognized as a member of this church? Please could you fill in an electoral roll form? That means at our annual meeting coming up that you will be um, able to vote. You can always attend it anyway, and that'll, that's May the 15th, so don't worry about that, but do worry about getting yourself on the electoral roll. Is there anything I've forgotten? I know of one more thing. Oh, I know, we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. <laughs> um, but before we come to that, it's somebody's birthday today. Hannah? you want to stand up? Many of you will have met Hannah as she passed around stars and flowers and all sorts of other things. She's over there and she's nine today. Now, is there anyone else in here who's got a birthday this week or even today? Okay, you're all keeping mum. So we're going to sing just for you, Hannah. Mark, please.
Okay, a couple of final things. Um, about three, three or four weeks ago now, we had a first aid course here in church. The certificates have arrived. So see me after the service if you, would, if you did that course and would like to collect your certificate. And thank you very much to Mark, our director of music and organist, who is also, for what it's worth, a first aid instructor and guided us through that day very ably. And I'm pleased to say everybody who attended passed. So you've all got a certificate. So we now have all sorts of qualified, for at least four, I think, that I can see in here now. So that's really good news. We have lots of qualified first aiders in our church. I think that's it. Apart from you won't... We're after the service, just have a look at what Eukarya is wearing underneath her... <laughs> um, Alb, we're going to take them off. Yes, and, and I am too, but mine's a bit different. So, but in solidarity with Africa and with the Mothers' Union, we've broken out. Do you want to give a sneak preview? No. We have our African clothes on. I've, I <laughs> and Eukarya's actually has a picture of Mary Sumner on it. <laughs> So over coffee, and I hope you will all join for coffee, tea, hot chocolate, squash, cake, well, biscuits at any rate, um, after the service, which is now coming towards the end as we sing our final hymn, the hymn of Mary, Jesus' mum. When she first discovered she was going to have a baby, she sung these words, Tell out my soul, number 39. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and everyone you love, living and departed, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.
God bless everyone. Please pray for the Ukrainian people. Bye-bye.